In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Please be seated. Several years ago, a friend of mine lost his best friend to a brain embolism. His friend was eating breakfast, eggs and toast. He complained of a headache, and minutes later, he was dead. For my friend and for my friend's family, it was a, just a devastating loss. And as I spoke to my friend about his grief, he said those words that perhaps we've heard before or maybe you have actually said. I just talked to him the other day. Everything was fine. Life-changing moments aren't, are usually typically surrounded by the mundane, the ordinary. Very rarely do we see major transitions in life coming. We say things like, I was just walking my dog like I do every morning, and then the phone rang, and I got the news. Or my friend was just eating eggs and toast when suddenly he was dead. Imagine yourself, perhaps, going through some old papers at your house in that corner of the, of the house that needs to be cleaned desperately, that you've been v- avoiding for a very, very long time, and you stumble across an old, crumpled sort of collection of papers, and there's a sort of an old paper bag in there, and it's, it's no big deal. It's just an ordinary thing. It's just a paper bag, but inside of it, you discover stacks of $100 bills totaling $100,000. Everything just changed. You didn't know the money was there. It was just a regular paper bag. But the ordinary contained something extraordinary. Perhaps when they were telling the story of Jesus, some of the disciples might have said something like, you know, we were just eating dinner in the upper room of some guy's house when suddenly everything changed. About a week before this, Jesus had arrived into Jerusalem, and it was, if you haven't heard, it was quite the parade. Somebody got an idea to wave some palms, and that took off, and boy, it was, it was great. Um, just a little before that, some guy named Lazarus came out of a tomb because Jesus told him to. There were things happening around Jesus. But Jesus and his followers in Jerusalem, they still needed to eat. They still intended it on celebrating the Passover meal. And this would have been a very normal and ordinary thing. No real grand expectations here. When suddenly, Jesus, the Messiah, gets up, takes off his clothes, wraps a towel around his waist, and does the thing that the lowly servant would do, and begins to wash his friend's feet. An ordinary dinner, brutally interrupted by a beautiful and extraordinary act. But here's the thing, and maybe this is why it bothered Peter so much. Because when you get your feet washed by another, when you are served in that way, it lets the servant, the one doing the washing, it lets them know that you're covered with dirt and grime and filth. The servant gets to see things that maybe you'd rather keep to yourself. And that can get a bit dicey. For us. No, 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 Jesus, I'll just keep this to myself. You don't need to see this. But my friends, this is not our call, is it? To be followers of Jesus is to allow ourselves to be served. We put our filth out there for God to see, and we're washed clean. And again, think about it. If, if we don't want to think about being filthy or getting dirty or letting others see the grime in our lives, then we're really not displaying our way of life to them. Because getting grime and dirt and filth all over you, that's normal. That's what happens when you are on a journey, on a dusty road in your faith with God and with Jesus. If you're squeaky clean, if nothing's sticking to you, perhaps it means you're not very far out of your comfort zone on the dusty road of your faith with Jesus. Perhaps getting covered in nastiness and filth is a part of being filled with God's spirit. 
And yes, we know, as Jesus tells Peter, that we are washed clean by God's amazing grace. We know this. But that doesn't mean that we don't step in some filth now and then. Correct? When we follow Jesus along these dusty roads of faith journeying with him, we get a little dirty. And so we wash our feet. And we're served by God and those around us who are part of this faith community with us. And a healthy community is open to letting its people share their struggles, display their filth, getting, allowing things to be heard and giving them, giving them over to God, to God's healing and the, and the comforting peace of God's spirit. This is how we love one another unconditionally, when we allow people to share their hurts and struggles. Because, as Jesus says, this is how people will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. The word love that's used there is the word agape, and it's the Greek word for a deep and unconditional love. It's not a feeling. It's not you and I trying to sort of muster up some fake smiles when that annoying person comes into church and sits near you, right? It's the whole, the peace of the Lord be with you, and also with you, Goodness, you're annoying. I've been there. People will know that we are Jesus' followers when we display this love that is so open, so inviting, so accepting of people's struggles, that it's so sacrificial, that it takes a radical display of that love in order for us to even begin to understand it. It takes an extraordinary thing happening in the ordinary. It takes Jesus putting on a servant's towel and washing his friend's feet. Right in the middle of an ordinary dinner, an extraordinary and life-changing event occurs. And the disciples were changed forever. And there's no going back after you've been changed forever. And my friends, is that not the good news? When we encounter a life-changing moment with God, it can't be undone. It's impossible to go back. We can't see the world, our lives, or maybe even God, the way that we used to see those things. I was just living my life when suddenly God changed everything. So as we wash one another's feet tonight, and I invite you to step out of the comfort zone and come forward and have your feet washed or wash another's feet. As we wash one another's feet tonight, may we be reminded that God is in the changing everything business. May we allow ourselves to be served as well as to serve the others in our church community. And may we be the kind of Jesus followers that, in, that interrupt the ordinary the ordinary things in life with the extraordinary love of Jesus. Amen.